you can actually calculate the velocity of the wave as it travels from this end of the slinky to that side and bounces back. So in other words, we can calculate the speed of a wave moving through that material. And it's just the frequency of my handshakes multiplied by the wavelength. So this symbol represents wavelength. So a wavelength should be one crest, one trough, and so it would have this shape here. And that means if you looked at the first mode shape, this is actually only half of a wavelength, right? Because if you could imagine, the rest of the wavelength should come over here. So that would be a full wavelength. So that means in the first mode shape or harmonic, we have half of a wavelength. Well, how many wavelengths do we have in the second mode shape? We actually have one full wavelength. And in the third shape, how many wavelengths do you see here? Well, a full wavelength looks like that, and there's still another half of a wavelength. So we have one and a half wavelengths here. The faster I shook my hand, and the higher this mode shape got, what happened to the wavelength of the wave? As the frequency increases, the wavelength actually decreases, and that's true for all waves. If that's true, what can we say about velocity? The speed of the wave as it travels through the material has to be constant because anytime I shake my hand with a higher frequency, the wavelength always goes down and that causes this to never change. And that's a very important thing to remember about waves. If I'm producing sound waves by vibrating my vocal cords, the speed of sound through the air is constant. I can speak at a higher frequency or a higher pitch and that's just gonna cause the wavelengths to get smaller but it doesn't change the velocity of sound as it travels through the air.